Hey everybody. Beets are one of my favorite things to grow and I apologize that with the beets like the rest of the garden I'm kind of starting this at the end. I didn't give you a video showing how we planted the beets but if you've never planted beets they're super easy and super rewarding for the crop you get. Now I know a lot of people say they don't like beets. Honestly I don't understand that. Maybe you had a bad upbringing. I don't know. I've always liked beets. Um, when you roast the beets they're awesome. My wife makes beets awesome. She dices them up and puts olive oil and spices on them and roasts them in the oven. They're great. Pickled beets, great. They're sweet. They're tangy. I love it. But uh, I know beets can be a little controversial. When I was in college, the ladies at the dorm cafeteria always called me Beet Man because I was the only guy that came through, apparently, that ate beets on the days that they had them. So don't quite get that. Have a little trouble relating to that. If you say you don't like beets, I encourage you try some different varieties. Look up the seeds that are out there. Look in the seed catalogs. See what's out there. Maybe you just haven't found the one that you like. But anyway, we're getting ready to pull the beets here. When you plant the beets, I'm just going to give a real quick overview since I didn't have a video for it. But beets are real easy to plant. Um, the one thing that's kind of important to help make sure you get good germination is to soak the seeds overnight in just a cup of water. And uh, that will help to break down the outer shell. I do know some people will crush up the seeds and they can scatter them out farther. And, uh, and that works fine too. I don't often do that. Um, but what I did this year, I soaked my seeds overnight. I dried them. I mixed up the seed with some dried used coffee grounds just to have something to a medium to kind of help spread them out. And then I scattered them throughout my bed. Now one thing I could have done better is come back and thinned them. But throughout the year I fertilized them. I planted them in this bed that I had prepared with compost. So I'm hoping that they grew well. We're actually getting probably a, getting a little past our time for picking beets. Um, some of these may come out a little woody. That's the risk when you leave the beets in the ground too long as they start to get woody. But I'm sure we're going to get some, some good beets out of this. So let's get into it and see what we have. One thing I will mention as I get started here is that these beet greens aren't very pretty looking. They're all bug eaten and that's okay. They're not, uh, you know, the, the greens obviously help the, the beet root to grow but uh, the roots look pretty good. Now you can eat the greens. You can cook them and prepare them just like a lot of other greens like spinach or, or many other, and they're very healthy. For my family, we don't often eat the greens, so I don't mind that the bugs had their share. We're gonna take the root and enjoy those. We got uh, most of those beets pulled. There's a few little puny ones I'm not going to bother with. Um, but even with some of the smaller ones, I will go ahead and take them in. Like I said, one of our favorite ways to have beets is to dice them up and roast them with some, some uh, oil and some spices on them. And, uh, and I'm sorry I'm being not being more specific. Uh, not sure what my wife's secret recipe is. The job's not done yet. Now when you pull the beets, um, you want to make sure that they're not going to go soft on you and the reason they go soft is when the beets start losing moisture and one of the quickest ways they'll lose moisture is if you leave those leaves on um, they're going to try to draw their water and nutrients from the beet that they were getting from the soil so we want to get those tops off of those right away and we're not going to waste any of that we're going to take those tops off and put them right into our compost bin so let's get to it the compost bins that I use is a set of these three progressive bins. I won't get too much into them. Maybe I'll make a video about the, our composting later. I start off in this first bin, add all my green grass clippings and uh, layer up green and brown material. But this is all the new stuff. Let's get on to composting these beet greens.
now we have a good crop of beets that will last us for quite a while. Uh, we have some runty ones in the group, and that's largely because I failed to thin these like I should. When I first started gardening, it was so hard to thin things because uh, I felt like I was killing off half my crop. But uh, it really does make a difference when you thin them out enough so that uh, individual plants will have plenty of resources, uh, plenty of nutrients from the soil and not be having to uh, compete with the others that are close by. But anyway, I didn't get to that this year. And uh, like I said, I left these in the ground a little too long. So some of them are, are kind of woody at the top. Um, you can see a few of these, like this one here. It's, you can see it's like real woody at the top at the crown of the uh, beet. But the rest of that, there's no problem with that. So uh, we'll just cut off those, those parts that may be a little woody and tough. And uh, we'll still have some, some good beets for eating. So even though I kind of failed on a few things on this crop, I just want this to be a, an illustration that you, know, you don't have to do everything perfect to, to get a decent crop. And like I said earlier, beets are easy to grow. You know, they're one of the first things I started growing. They're one of the things I grow year after year. I don't encourage not thinning. In fact, I do encourage thinning. And uh, I don't encourage leaving them in the ground too long because you'll get better beetroot if you um, harvest them earlier. But the point being, don't take things too hard if you're not doing everything perfectly. So anyway, now it comes to the storing and there's different ways that you can store root vegetables. In general, the important thing is that you want them in a, a cool, dark place and uh, you don't want them to dry out or you don't want them to be so wet that they mold. If you have the ability to do it, um, you could actually put them in, in buckets or barrels or something in your basement or a root cellar and layer them in, in sawdust and you can pull them out as you need them. What we usually do is we'll just take them as they are here. We don't, we don't wash them because we don't want to put them away wet. We'll just put them in, in Ziploc freezer bags and put them in uh, the bottom of the refrigerator and uh, they will keep for a long time that way. We've had some beets that we've, we've kept for months that way. As long as they're not wet and don't get moldy, um, they'll keep pretty well. So if you're not growing beets, I encourage you to do so. Either way, I wish you luck in your garden. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're growing beets. How was your harvest this year? Good luck to you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. So what is your amazing beet recipe? Well, um, fresh beets from your garden. Chop them up into little pieces and whatever size, bite size you want. Um, but the smaller, the smaller the size, the less time it takes to bake. Um, and then I mix um, some avocado oil, salt and pepper, mix that up really well with the beets and then spread them out on the pan and sprinkle them with rosemary. And then I bake them at about 425 for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour but especially until um, they start to get that caramelized sugar on the outside like this one, this one here. You want them kind of, kind of dark. I think they'll be good. You can see it kind of happening on some of them. And that's the secret.